the mid to late 1960s, Northrop was successfully supplying F-5 jets to allied countries. The F-5A Freedom Fighter was a compact, simple aircraft that was easy to fly, maintain, and delivered its performance in a cost-effective way. Northrop concluded that there would be a global demand for an upgraded version of the F-5 capable of flying at Mach 2. This aircraft was named the P-530. The P-530 program was launched in early 1971. Although it was a capable aircraft, it struggled to attract buyers. Additionally, the U.S. Air Force was concerned about the P-530, believing it could pose challenges for the F-15 Eagle program. The P-530 program faced challenges because foreign nations were not going to purchase a plane that the U.S. Air Force didn't use. Meanwhile, the F-15 was undergoing changes due to the introduction of the Soviet MiG-25, which could reach Mach 2.8, faster than any frontline Western jet. Consequently, the F-15 was modified to accommodate larger engines, increased fuel capacity, longer range radar, and heavier weapons, driving up its cost significantly. The expansion of the F-15 ultimately created an unexpected opportunity. Its high cost made it impossible for the U.S. Air Force to equip all of its squadrons. In response, the Pentagon introduced the Lightweight Fighter Program, aiming to develop a smaller and more affordable aircraft. As a result, General Dynamics was selected to build two YF-16 demonstrators, while Northrop was tasked with creating two YF-17 prototypes based on the P-530, now renamed the P-600. The Air Force planned to test both prototypes head-to-head -to, -head to determine which one would be selected. Both the YF-16 and YF-17 delivered impressive performances. Notably, the YF-17 became the first U.S. Air Force aircraft to break the sound barrier in level flight without relying on afterburners. While the YF-17 excelled in several aspects, the YF-16 had advantages, including a proven engine, longer range, and a lower cost. As a result, the YF-16 won the competition and was produced in large quantities as the Fighting Falcon. The two YF-17 prototypes were handed over to NASA, where they were utilized for research purposes for several years before being retired. The U.S. Navy needed a new aircraft to replace its carrier-based F-4 Phantom II, A-6 Intruder, and A-7 Corsair II. When the design program encountered difficulties, the main competitors were directed to consider aircraft from the lightweight fighter program. Since the Navy preferred having two engines for operations over open water, the YF-16 was not a viable option. Northrop decided to adapt the YF-17 design for naval use by refining it and reinforcing the landing gear. They partnered with McDonnell Douglas and submitted a proposal to the U.S. Navy. The proposal was accepted, leading to the establishment of the F-18 program. As the Hornet McDonnell Douglas produced the F-A-18 in large numbers, the initial models were the A model, a single-seat version, and the B model, a two-seat variant. This was followed by the C and D models, also single and two-seat configurations respectively. Over time, the Navy identified some issues with the Hornet, particularly its short range and limited bomb load. In response, a new generation of Super Hornets was introduced, with the FA, 18E, and F models being about 30% larger than the original Hornet and its predecessor, the YF-17 Cobra.